for the defense. A very quick ban coming out from them. Are you expecting anything? Uh, well, I was thinking of Habana. But, you know, you're not going to know if I'm just saying that to appear right or not. But, yeah, H Habana on uh, Clubhouse is very common, of course, you know, to yep. make those hard breaches a lot more difficult. But um, as for the follow-up, Lion, Lion, pretty stock standard. Yep, no real surprises out of that at all. You know, I feel like you can just toss a, you know, a dart at a dartboard and say, yeah, they're going to ban Lion this time, and you're probably right. Or, you know, they're going to ban Glaz or one of those other regular bans. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a mirror. Yeah, I, well, I, again, I don't think Mira is the most impactful operator on Clubhouse. We said this last time. I would be yeah. more leaning towards, I don't know, maybe yeah, Clash. Yeah, Clash is a very good yeah, sure, one. That's what you, that's what you were um, going to say. It wasn't what I was going to. It wasn't what I was going to say. But I can admit when I'm wrong, Monkey. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, and there's the mirror coming yeah. out from Fnatic. So yeah, it, it is very interesting in the whole pick and ban phase how there are these operators that are banned pretty much every round. Like, well, th there's less diversity in the operators than I was expecting. I'll be honest with it. Yeah, well, the more I think about it, I think Fnatic won that pick ban phase, right? Clash, they did not handle Clash well when Atletico was running it yeah. during the seeding matches, right? So them not having to face Clash is in my opinion a victory for them and they didn't have to ban it out. So I think if Clash wasn't banned by Sengoku, um, I think Fnatic would have 100% banned it out. So I, I think Fnatic won that operator pick ban phase. Yeah, and not to mention that they are on uh, defense to start things off. Not having to go against a Habana on Clubhouse can be very strong as we are. going to see a very interesting sixth pick tease to the, the, Lige, sorry, uh, the Jaeger switched over to a Capcan. Yeah, and he got through. Rizraz taking the cap can on the first round. That's something interesting. See, I, I don't mind the idea for it. Like, he's going to scatter them out across the map, right? And they're going to have a very heavy roam game. We've got Lusty on the Jackal. Probably, I'm mixing it all up, on the Vigil. Uh, joined along by Neo Fighter with those Prismas. It's, it's going to be a very uh, mind game heavy matchup, I feel. Yes, I think it is as well. Uh, Fnatic, they... Uh, I, I think I think when we talk about um, Fnatic failing to prep for people in the past, I think those days are definitely behind them at this point. Um, signing with Fnatic, I don't think they would let that happen again. Well, there's no excuse, especially, you know, they are players that are, you know, receiving, you know, financial support from the organization as well. And now that's the second time Magnet's missed that. He's uh, just going to forget it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we do see uh, one of those alibis shot almost immediately. Yeah, it was placed in a window, I think, and, uh, you know, just pre-fired the window, and all of a sudden you're spotted. One of so my favourite things to do is put one there, and then once it's shot, jump in it. And take it out, yeah. No, no, pretend to be the uh, alibi, the alibi and they were yeah. not going to shoot it again. And you can line up the one tap. That is actually not a bad, not a bad mind game there, Monkey. Oh, yeah. But I'm sure these players are aware of that one. It is fairly common. <laughs> yes, it is. There uh, was um, lots some good uh, montages going around of that sort of stuff. But Magnet roaming around on this Valkyrie. Rizraz roaming upstairs as well on this cap can. There's not really an operator you see on a roam very often. See, it's not the operators I expected, is it? We've got the Vigil down on site. We do have Neo, uh, Magnet, and Rizraz on the roam. And uh, Gator Art is just having a bit of issue here with his uh, shotgun. Finally gets it to behave for him. He's going to scan out the footsteps of the Valkyrie. That is Magnet. Yep, they know he is downstairs at this point. Um, he's managed to make his way all the way back. And uh, oh. Rizraz, though, finds Yoshingo. He gets taken out. Yeah, and he also puts some damage down onto Suzu with a bit of a wall bang there. But now he is trapped completely in this bathroom. But as he's going to vault on through, Neo Fighter peeks on out and finds him. Neo Fighter with another and Lusty with one of his own. Leaving it all up to Gatorada, who's, uh, I think he knows he might be in a bit of a spot of bother. And, oh, it's the cap can <laughs> trap to finish things off. That is a flawless first round there for Fnatic, showing their strength. Certainly is. That was a really, really well played and well executed strategy by Fnatic. Picking apart the Sengoku um, attack. And they barely even entered the, entered the map. Yeah, it was, it was definitely one of those roam games that is very difficult to... Uh, counter 
Um, it, it just felt like Sengoku needed to tighten things up a bit with how they wanted to clear it. Like they're a bit too slow to capitalize and you know when they take the fights it was the one-on-ones not really the uh, two-on-ones or three-on-ones that you want to see. Yeah absolutely so I think that you know Fnatic playing very very well together as a team there. Uh, it was nice to see the cap can get the final kill with the trap. Um, yeah. You know just, just a little salt in the wound you know just, just rubbing it in a little bit it was uh, really nice to see but I think that uh, Sengoku didn't show a lot of signs of life. They didn't really have much of an option. Like, they didn't really have much of a chance to show much. But that being said, we struggled to watch Jackal create a rotate hole for himself. He couldn't vault through it. It took him, like, a full clip and then, like, two reloads. Could so, be a bit of nerves like, here for Sengoku, couldn't it? Yeah, I mean, the ITA isn't great for destruction, but, I mean, at that point, you got, you got to know what you can and can't get through. Like, you got to... So, I think that I, I think that Sengoku, they need to wake up. We know that they're better than what they just performed then. One thing I also want to mention is that uh, Fnatic do have a lot of Japanese fans. Like, see, the, the engagement with all the Japanese fans on Twitter is, is absolutely enormous for the Fnatic squad. Um, so, you know, I, I really feel like, you know, maybe playing in this Tokyo Arena, it might be more of a neutral ground rather than a favoured for uh, Sengoku. You reckon? Well, yeah, they you, do have a lot of Japanese fans. Yeah, but like, surely they would support their own, their their homegrown teams over like a. Maybe, maybe it's the case of they want both to win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or maybe they just want to see some good R6. Yeah, well, that's pretty much all I want to see is some amazing R6 tonight. And we've been spoiled so far today, but we'll have to see what this final game shows up. Yeah, definitely. So they are attacking the uh, CCTV room, cash room now. Uh, Sengoku. Looks like it, it's not one that they have to get inside and into the Fnatic web as much. So I'm yeah. hoping to see a, a bit better here from Sengoku. Yeah, and they've managed to push their way into gym. They have control of uh, the west side of the top floor of Clubhouse. And now they're going to be pushing their way down. Magnet was somewhere around those central stairs. So if they're not careful, he could 100% be able to get a beautiful flank onto them. Yeah, can just place a claymore at the bottom of those stairs. I think that's what they've done. And then they've also got one at the door into uh, the bedroom there. Yeah, Ararina placed his claymore down. And it does look like, uh, no, Magnet is there primed for the flank. If they're not careful, he could come up huge. This is another case of a very one-dimensional push. They're not even trying for the garage or or uh, trying to push in uh, to the above the blue stairs wall. So very interesting. Yeah, they managed to open an additional way into construction, but again, it's only into construction. They still have to funnel through that door because they do have a Thatcher, so they could technically get rid of the bandit batteries. And especially if no one's there to trick it out, Here we go. Wayu Man is going to be able to get it as Ararina drops the Thatcher nade. I don't think they are going to be tricking it, but oh, there was a nade over the top to stop a, co uh, to stop a Pokeball coming out, but... In comes the gas grenades. Drones are going to come out with, you know, just shy of a minute left now. 5v5. You're going to see that smoke nice and close to the breach as well. I'm not sure if he's going to be much longer in this world. Sleep 4 comes on out. Does some damage, but Arena's going to find two before Suzu C goes down. That was the two on the flank, I believe, and Sengoku are in the driving seat of this round right now. They certainly are. We see uh, Gatorita uh, Gator sitting outside. And where you man finds Neophyte's head as well. They only lose up to Aces and Rizraz. Aces coming up from the garage though on the flank. Aces. Ooh. Ooh. Aces shotguns um, Gatorada in the head. Yoshingo picks up another one. And just like that, Sengoku pick up a round. So that first round was flawless for Fnatic. And we were thinking, uh-oh. Is this going to be another 12-0 or 10-0, whatever you want to call it? But no, Sengoku, they're quick to respond with their own right hook to the cheek of Fnatic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Fnatic, they just sort of got picked apart there. Their roams weren't timed properly, I don't feel like. I was very critical about their one-dimensional hold, but Fnatic, as you said, their roam was picked apart, but, you know, they try and went for, the, they tried to go for the flank, and our arena just mowed them down. Yeah. Our arena watching that flank, it's always important to have, like, claymores and utility watching your back. It's even more important to have someone with a weapon facing your back. Right, like, <laughs> yes. because, you know, your, your, your utility can get picked apart, your utility can get taken out, it can get walked around, it, you know, a hundred million things can go wrong with that. You know, if someone's there, you at least know the call-out's going to happen. Yeah, of course. 
The simple drone's just as effective, just not as shooty. Yep, yeah. oh, that is true. Well, Fnatic gonna attempt to defend the exact same position this time. Do you reckon they're gonna put more players in towards the gym and bedroom side of the map, or are they gonna try and rely on one of those uh, late flanks once again, or are Sengoku gonna attack completely differently? I would like to see Sengoku attack completely differently. I would like to see some depth into their strategy, even if they, you know, they come out and attack this east side, uh, this east side veranda or something. Sorry, just to like say, but what do you call the uh, reinforced wall that Magnet's reinforcing right now? Like, I just call it the east wall. I was calling it box the other day because it reminds me a lot of like the canal, like um, pill box area. Oh yeah. So I, I don't know. So, I don't know. I just call it the east wall. East wall. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's the east balcony. So it's not really a balcony, though, is it? Like it's. I it's could like call it's it a veranda. A it's a roof. Yeah. I mean, most balconies are roofs in this game. If you want to go that route. All right, sure. So like, I, I, I don't know. I just call it east balcony. It so, looks like Sengoku are going to go for the same attack, however, and I'm sure Fnatic might have a bit of a read on this one. Very similar operator selection, however. Yeah, they do have the Doki B this time, though. And yeah. the IQ is, I don't think they bought something last time. Did, was Yushingo on the IQ? I don't think it was. No, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure they did have the Dokubi, though. Did they? Yeah, that was Gatorada standing outside on the Dokubi. Oh, yeah. Um, what's interesting for me is the Fnatic lineup have got the uh, Alibi. This yes. is the uh, second time they've played it. I don't think. Yeah, Lusty really enjoying that Alibi. I have to see what he can get away with with these Prismas. And... I I think Aces, does he, if he still has that shotgun, Aces needs to be um, probably sitting around a window that he can get a peek with. See, as a smoke player, you don't really want to get too aggressive and throw your life away early on in the round. Um, so I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. You want to stay safe and make sure you can toss those babes out when it really matters. Yeah, fair point. Um, but... That shotgun is going to be amazing when someone jumps into the room. Like, I'm not telling him to go spawn peeking or anything. <laughs> spawn peeking with a shotgun, shotgun. that'll be a sight. <laughs> hey, man, I've seen it happen before. <laughs> it's Boz G territory, that's what that is. <laughs> uh, I, I hope we see a meme cannon today. Oh, yeah, but unlikely as Sengoku, you know, doing what they did exactly last round. They're taking control of the bedroom in the gym. Now they're going to take control of construction. Oh, ADS is going to stop it there. I'm going to throw a second one. ADS takes out that one as well. And as soon as you see it, I don't really know what he was expecting amongst all that. I think he thought the uh, ADS, ADS was behind. Yeah, behind the shield, and he threw it in front that time. But yeah, no difference there. As there's a minute on the clock, and Sengoku are getting ready for this push. I, want, I don't think they're going to get mowed down on the flank this time, Fnatic. So this will play out very differently. Yeah, I think so as well. And there it is, Magnet finding Yoshingo. He's being taken out as last. He's coming up the central stairs. If they're not careful, he will play huge. Magnet as well, sitting on the cash stairs. Not really going to be able to find him too much. Rocking a pentaskin of all things. Last, he does find uh, Ararena, though. And it is now a man advantage to Fnatic in 5v3. Yeah, and 30 seconds on the clock. They're going to have to push on in any moment now, tossing whatever utility they can to assist. But there's still a rogue Echo Drone on the prowl. Yep, so much uh, so much utility being spent. The Echo Drone coming through. Rizraz finds one. Aces finds another. Our Arena finds a Claymore kill, but Aces gets himself a double kill. And Fnatic come up with a very strong round. You said it was going to go differently. It seemed like they learned from their mistakes, Monkey. And Fnatic coming up big. So the two rounds that Fnatic have won have both been... Oh, Stomps. Well, I was going to say flawless, but then I remembered Lusty died to that Claymore, but basically flawless. Yeah. Like, there was no, no need for him to push up the stairs and die to the Claymore, but yeah. Very, two very convincing rounds from Fnatic, and then one that Sengoku managed to respectably get. Yeah, so I, I think Fnatic um, are going to be very happy with that. They're going to be in a very strong position moving forward. Um, I think it's interesting to note how dominant the victory has been for both teams. Right, like the, the victories they've maintained. Sengoku had a fairly dominant victory. It's been a lot of snowball, uh, hasn't it? It, it has. Um, so, you know, if one team... Technically, if one team can get a small advantage, they can snowball it into a victory. Well, we are going to see Maverick come out here for Yoshi. So, uh, where are Fnatic going? Are they going back uh, downstairs? Yes, they are. Yeah, back down to the basement. I think this is a very good call. Not having to reveal your tertiary bomb site just yet. Which we're just going to assume it's gym bedroom. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Um, Fnatic aren't known for doing anything too ridiculously crazy. Sometimes. 
reckon? I think it depends on their opponent, and I don't think they're going to do it in this event. Yeah, I, I really, yeah. I think if they're ever going to be pulling out stuff, it's going to be against an opponent that they actually are very worried about. And, you know, we're coming into this one, we're saying Fnatic are the favourites. So, yep. you know, they're not going to really reach into their magic bag of strats if, uh, unless things start going south. Yeah, that is true. But, you know, it could it could well and truly keep going south. I mean, Sengoku have shown signs of life. Um, so, and Magnet. Magnet, that's two for two, mate. He manages to throw it out finally. Um... But I, I f yeah, I, I strongly feel like Fnatic uh, will stick to the tried and trust, uh, tried and tested for now. That was harder to get out than it should have been. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to favour Fnatic in this one after the beautiful roam we saw them do last time. It's just aces, and I think Magnet was heading back to the start to try and hold it down. But you know, we're going to see those uh, cap cans are out and about the place with Rizraz once again. You know, fighter up in support of him, of course. Arena takes a fair chunk of damage from something. I'm not quite sure what it was. Uh, be a cap can, I'd say, judging by the amount. Yeah, actually, that probably fits very well. As there's no goo mines or anything like that. So, yeah, cap can will have to be it. The cap trap's coming out strong so far. And cap trap, I love that. Yeah, the cap traps. That's the first time I'm hearing that. Really? I've said it for years. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and Aces is going to get taken out by Yashingo. As uh, he's going to tell him to site. sit down. He's on site. Okay. Yep. Gatorade is on site. Punt's going down. This is Fnatic not ready. They're trying to roam too heavy and they've been punished. Is Gatorade with another one? Leaving it all up to Rizraz and Neofighter to try and come back to site to retake against the full might of Sengoku. Yeah, absolutely. This is not going well for them at all. Two versus four. Rizraz is going to be pushing his way in through Memorial while Neofighter holds the flank. Neofighter comes up with a kill on Suzu C. But now. Uh, Rizraz has to push his way forward. The plant's gone down. There is one coming down central stairs. Neofighter tries to pre-fire it, but he turns around at just the wrong moment. This could be deadly for it. Al uh, as Ararena, as he finds Neofighter, he looks the wrong way. He's uh, Rizraz, sorry, has managed to push his way in. And Wayu Man from the side finds it. Sengoku just muscled their way into Fnatic's territory. Well, that's what happens when you roam heavy, isn't it? You just get rushed on. I was like, wait a minute. We've got the Maverick on site. He's killed Aces on site. The plant's going down on site. And oh. <laughs> yeah, the, as you said, Fnatic was not ready for it at all. The like Aces would have called out, "I've been killed on site," you know, and then. But I don't think they realised exactly how much trouble they were in because they did not react fast enough as a team. So I, I really think that it was played. I think Aces was Aces' death was played down a little bit there. Yeah, well, you know, he was the smoke, he was the sight anchor. Like, is, if he's the first one dying in the round, I think that is a, you know, a, a alarm bells ringing moment of, wait a minute, our defences have been breached. Like, it's that whole meta game of, you know, yes, you can roam and you can make them hunt the roamers, but it's only going to work if they decide to take the bait. Yeah, and like, you know, why do you hunt the roamers? Because, you know, when you push the sight, you just get shot in the sight. But if you push the sight and, you know, don't get shot in the sight, the roamers are a bit of a waste and suddenly they're attacking at a disadvantage with defensive weapons. Yeah, and that's why you normally see um, that's why you normally see hatches opened and things like that when you have heavy roam, so they can get back in. Also, if they ignore the roamers, the roamers can you know use vertical uh, use vertical play or you know horizontal rotates or anything like that to create an advantage. But all the hatches were reinforced, so they were forced to come down the two main stairs. They were forced to funnel into it. Sengoku knew where they were going to come from. It was such a classic play that we used to see from Irons, which you know this roster is made of the made of the skeleton of. So. It, it, it does make sense that that's the kind of player they'd pull. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we see really fast, quick play from them from times, and we saw Irons do rushes from in the past from time to time as well. Like, um, we've seen the infamous Oregon rush and a couple others coming out from them. So um, I, I think that Fnatic definitely going to have to be ready for that from now on. Well, it's just surprising to me. Like I tell you, Fnatic just cannot play Oregon. Like I don't, they just have such mixed results on it. Do you, are you, do you mean Clubhouse? You... Oh, sorry. Yes. I don't know why I had Oregon. I think because you're talking I, about I said hatches the rush. and open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they just cannot play Clubhouse. Let, like I, I don't know why they keep uh, letting it through the band phase. Maybe they've been working on it? Like, yeah, of course, like, you know, it, from what we see versus what teams see in scrims is, can be drastically different. Yeah. Yeah. 
So maybe maybe they've been working on it. Maybe they've been putting a ton of uh, effort into increasing what is traditionally one of their weakest maps to try and bait people who've done their research throughout the season to take them on a map that now all of a sudden they've done all this extra work on. But it seems like Sengoku just have the answers for whatever Fnatic are throwing it. Yeah, definitely. So, almost halfway through the round, and we still have Magnet, a bit sneaky-beaky on the roam here. I'm not sure if they're quite aware of his actual position, although they are going to be now. Yep, they know exactly where he is, and, you know, Sengoku going to just be aware of it, be cautious of it, but they're not going to try and muscle him out, and instead going to try and push their way straight down into blue, couple rotating around into the bar drop. And, you know, if they drop down into Memorial and start pushing their way in through there, they could do some serious damage. But it looks like Suzu might actually be rotating around to the dirt tunnel. Yeah, Magnet's also been able to successfully make his way back to the bomb site. We have seen Gatorada has dropped in to Memorial, actually in the hallway right now with a minute on the clock. It's still a 5v5. Yeah, and, you know, Gatorada just... Watching someone open a wall in front of him, not quite sure where it's coming from. Going to pull out the SMG-12 and try and rush him, but Lusty from the side is going to pick him off. Suzy C finds Neo Fighter, though, for a very quick trade back. Way you man going to be opening up the kitchen hatch, finally, just 40 seconds left. That's usually an objective you see very early picked open. And Sengoku now, 30 seconds left, 4v4, just slowing things down, deciding how they want to commit. Yeah, well, they really need to do something very quickly because if something goes wrong when they're going for the plant, they want to be able to correct it. But they're also spread out over the map. Is this is this right? We're going to see Lusty peek up from the hatch and find Yoshingo. Suzu's trying to crouch walk in from Memorial as Wayu's going to find Rizraz pushing down the main hallway. We see the Ash finished off as Aces and Magnet are going to find a frag. And then Magnet again. That is Fnatic taking the half. Three to two. Yeah, brilliant defense there by Fnatic, but I, I can't help but say that maybe that was gifted to them by the indecisiveness of Sengoku. Yeah, it was It was very higgledy-piggledy is the word I want to use. Higgledy-piggledy? I will accept that, monkey. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it was very... They didn't commit to anything. They didn't know what they wanted to do. It was like, did the IGL fall asleep? Like, <laughs> it, it was just... You know, they were they were all running back and forth like headless chickens between three different hatches. Yeah, like, it's just a bit how, of indecision. Like what? we we have seen, you know, as we said, that Irons roster, like one of the most one of the most famous plays is when they push into a bomb site with ten seconds left in a five v five and win it. Like Yeah. It, it is the kind of play that they're likely to pull off, but and you know, we can be so critical of it, but you know, they seem to make it work. Like then it didn't, of course, but like it's it's something they have done in the past. Yeah, it is, and but they need to adapt with it because it's obviously not going to work. The teams that they're versing have gotten better since then. So I, I think they need to adapt to the fact that they need to come up with something more reliable than oh, yeah. jump in, in ten, with 10 seconds left and frag five people. So I, I, I feel like they need to come up with something more productive, more use of their time. What's interesting to note is it's been very back and forth, one round for one round, one round for one round so far. So Fnatic, of course, took the first round, so they are in the lead at the half. But, uh, you know, if the pattern continues, it's going to be Sengoku taking this round. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll have to see how strongly, um, you know, Sengoku are on defense. This is, this is their first defensive round. It is in the basement as well. Both these teams favoring the basement. Uh, well, the, the uh, Habana ban really leads to that, that, I feel. Yes, I agree as well. Um, it really stops. Um, but do you, let, actually, let's talk about that ban for a minute. Fnatic banned Havana, presumably because they're on defense first, so they want to grab as many defense victories as they can. Yeah. Do you think Fnatic have successfully achieved their goal with that ban? I think three, three out of five is not uh, as many as they wanted. But I, I really don't think the Habana ban really has that kind of much impact in that regard. Like, it's good for when you're defending downstairs, but that's really, yeah, and that can only be the two out of three rounds at most. But we are going to see our arena find the first frag, but he has lost a lot of damage for it, but that's Magnet down. Yeah, that's a big kill on that buck. They're not going to be able to bust open these floors, but I can't help but feel like our arena's life is a little bit forfeit at this point. As the double peak comes out, Rizraz does manage to take it. Nero takes a ton of damage in response, though. And, you know, 4v4 now, do you think that this Habana is now going to... The lack of Habana is now going to hurt Fnatic, though, in their attacks. Look, Thermite, you know, I, th I think it just means when you attack downstairs, you just got to be more particular in what hatches you open up. 
like you know Habana gives you a lot of freedom in that regards. So well, I suppose the, they have the Maverick as well though for those hatches. Yeah. Worst comes to worst. But it's it is such a pain to open a hatch with the Maverick that has been reinforced. Yeah, that is true. But I mean, he can still technically get two hatches. Thermite can get the the dirt tunnel and uh, the second hatch. So you can theoretically get all three hatches open and the dirt tunnel. Yeah, well, it looks like Rizraz is going to be doing just as you suggested right now. He has been uh, burning away at that hatch, but we have uh, Gator Rada on these garage stairs. Could have some impact, but he has been to have the window opened up behind him. He sent a few bullets in that direction, but nothing's landed. He wants to get oh! back up there with the Deagle. See you later, Rizraz, as he has put the man advantage back into Sengoku's favor. What an aggressive push there by Gatorada. Neophyte are going to take out Suzy C as he drops on him. Uh, Ace finds Yashingo in amongst all that as well. So now they're going to have control of this blue oil pit. Ooh. Lusty gets down as he whiffs the shots on the Wayu man. And now that leads us to a two versus two. The health is about even though. Wayu man still fairly low though from his engagement from Lusty. Yeah, 40 seconds on the clock to make things happen here for Fnatic. This has been a very impressive defense here from Sengoku so far. It certainly has, but I feel like this has also been a very impressive attack from Fnatic. This is the closest round so far that I can remember of this team. And, ooh, Gatorada not quite pushing his way onto blue. There was someone into blue. Both Sengoku members are now in church. Gatorada going to reset his phone first. Wayu Man not going to get the option as he got double pushed there. Gatorada picks up one. It's now one of one. Gatorada clutches it. Beautiful round there for Gatorada. Deagle kill and the one on two clutch to finish it off. Impressive from the new young gun on the scene here. So, Fnatic, as I said, back and forth, back and forth once again. Absolutely. You called it, man. Three to three. And uh, overtime? Yeah, yeah, overtime. Yeah? Yeah, overtime. We're going to see overtime? All right. It's just, once again, Fnatic Clubhouse. <laughs> no. Yeah, they, yeah I, I'm starting to agree with you, Monkey. Um, I, I think I missed a couple of the Fnatic games because I did, I did, unfortunately, not catch every single match of our Pro League. Yeah, but, yeah there, there was that one uh, where they lost to Dead Set. Set, yes. Like... I did see that one. Um, and and the, I think they got smacked by controller. Either that was Taboo that got smacked by controller. Uh, that was on Oregon. Fnatic drew control on Oregon. No, no, but like, uh, okay, no, so it wouldn't, wouldn't have been Attackers against control, but yeah, I, I know they didn't really have a good performance on Clubhouse throughout the whole season. Yes. And then like, even at past lands, yet they still pull it out. Um, maybe I am beating a dead horse. Maybe they think they are good on Clubhouse, and it's just you know the teams we well, play them against seem to have a good grasp of it. But well, you can, you can argue that if you think you're good on a map, stats say otherwise. Yeah. What what are you going to go? Your own biased opinion or the empirical stats? Like numbers don't lie. But then I, again, I feel like if you you can't be you can't be that blinded by it that if you go back look at your stats and say. Holy crap, even in our own region, we're, you know, 50% win rate on this, just barely. And we, we really can't pull this out in an international tournament when the caliber of teams is ridiculously better than the teams we're versing. But let's go back to the uh, ban phase, right, where we saw uh, Fnatic decide to remove Villa to start off with. Like, it, it comes it comes down to, like, you know, what map do you feel more comfortable on? Villa that or is Clubhouse? True. That it, is true. You know, I can't really fault them for saying, okay, well, you know, we're Take okay with Villa. letting Clubhouse through, but I don't think they expected Sengoku to pick it. I really think they expected Sengoku to pick Border. Yeah, well, the the pick of Clubhouse by, Sengo, uh, by Sengoku is great because it means that they, you know, they've done their homework, they've done their, um, you know, they've done their research. They know, they know that Fnatic is not particularly great at this map, and Fnatic banning Villa, maybe Sengoku were comfortable enough to go. Villa as well. So you say that no matter what, pick one, Sengoku have an advantage in amongst that. Yeah, well, uh, you know, while we've all been waffling on about the maps, we haven't really mentioned this. It is a Montagna picked up here by Lusty. He uh, He's going to be the blunt uh, object to drive his way into the cash room and force uh, no. Caterada back. He's going to take some damage from that lobbed grenade. He's going to peek around the Monty and take even more damage, but I think his life might be forfeit. If he gets anything else here, it is a win in his books. Yeah, he is by rights dead. Uh, he could technically walk out the f walk out the door at this point, 
Uh, the second coconut's gonna come down, gonna down him. Lusty's like mine. And he, yeah, Lusty, Lusty will uh, kill secure uh, <laughs> the kill onto uh, Gatter out of there. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see this Monty being used purely just for the plant right at this door. You can cover off quite a lot of a planter if you ankle your Monty just right. We see, see Ararina just peace on out of there. He doesn't want to be hanging around. Sengoku's in a great spot, though, to be able to stop some of that Monty plant, uh, as you can't really cover off th that extreme of an angle, especially if you have another person in gym. Well, they just need to put someone on the windows, and the person in gym is throwing their life away for free. This is, uh, you know, very hard to counter execute here from Fnatic. Uh, but, you know, this tight, time's getting a tiny bit tight here. Certainly is. 45 seconds left. Fnatic is still trying to drone out to see what they can find. Still trying to make their way around. They do have a full five members, though. Full roster to come through. And, oh, Ararena. He's going to get a little bit too aggressive there as Ace is going to frag him out. Ace is still on that window. He's not playing his favorite Blackbeard. And uh, which is kind of interesting to me considering his job is to be on a window here. But Rizwa is going to find Suzu C. Yoshingo going to trade out in the Magnet though. And uh, that is going to leave us in a 1 versus 4 as Neo Fighter trades back onto Weiyu Man. All up to Yoshingo at this point. He's got a Monty pushing him. He's got a Zofia next to him. Rizraz is going to take out that one. There we go. The pattern continues. Yep. One back for Fnatic as they do put themselves back in that lead. 4 to 3. But, um,. Yeah, it was, it was a very good round there from Fnatic. They uh, executed very well with that Monty. It's, it's so hard to counter a Monty when you're not ready for it, is it? Yeah, it certainly can, especially if you have no one being able to get the flank up to them. Yeah. Um, like there, there was no way. Clubhouse is a very linear map in that regard. If you can't get in behind someone, that Monty's literally just going to push you back and push you back and push you back. So it, it comes down to you sort of need to get that flank off. They needed to have someone drop down the other side, run around all the way through basement, up through garage, and then push back in through that way. Um, it would have taken some time, but they had so much time. Like, uh, um, uh, who was it? Gatorada caught actually saved so much time. Like, Katarada was Defenders dead to rights. Like, I think he lived a lot longer than he probably should have. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you there, Mr. Fleet. But uh, we're into this next round. Uh, you know, if the, if the pattern does continue, it'll be Sengoku taking this one, and probably rather handily at that. Um, but I'm going to say this is where the trend gets bucked. You reckon? Yeah, just calling it. Like, you know, I get a feeling. A gut feeling. Yeah. They haven't been proved to be too good lately, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think we've, we've had a couple of gut feelings wrong, both of us. So, um, you know what? Just because you said, I'm going to get one of us right at this point. Oh, okay. I'm going to say the pattern continues. Pattern continues. Yeah. All right. So One of us will be right by the end of this. 100% guarantee on the bet. You know what's going to happen? <laughs> this is going to be a draw round. I can just feel it. <laughs> The universe conspires yeah. against us and we... Cast this curse. Yeah, uh, but we just, like, you know, uh, make the matches go how we want with <laughs> using the cast as curse. <laughs> uh, but Magnus made his way to the roof here. He's going to drone him. No, he's honest. He's going to throw his drone and then continue to run around. Um, I, I think we're probably going to see a, a nice roam clear along the top floor. I don't think Fnatic are going to bother clearing... Uh, anywhere else around the map, I think it's pretty much just going to be the top floor. Maybe some of the first floor behind some um, importance points. It looks like Rizraz is going to do the bandit denial trick here. Oh, that is perfect, isn't it? Right at ground level. Then Aces is going to... Ch oh! oh! Arena with a C4 through the Maverick hole. But that's all right, because he's done his job. Aces is going to repel on up here, and trust me, you'd rather lose the... Uh, Maverick rather than your Thermite at that point, and he's gonna open that all the way up. Yeah, I, that was, I bet your Rizraz felt so safe repelled upside down. A perfectly thrown C4 though, put an end to his life. Yeah, and the that fact was... that that wall wasn't banded is what allowed this C4 to get on through, but there is that Thermite. Lusty's gonna take a bit of damage with the one, two with the Echo Drone and bullets. Yep, that's a, a, a one, two is uh, age old as Echo being placed into the game. And, uh, you know, really countering that Monty. Uh, you said there's not a lot you can do about it. Well, that's what you can do about it. Meanwhile, Gatorada finds Magnet. Gatorada gets himself Ooh. a second. Aces finally puts a bullet through his head. Manages to end that rampage. But Gatorada comes up huge, and now it's a 2v4. 
Yeah, this is looking great for Sengoku as they are in the driving seat right now. There's still a minute to play with, but Neo Fighter, Ace's clutch master, you know, still could be right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we've got two of them up alive. You know, neither of those two players are uh, to be scoffed at as Neo puts a bullet through our, our arena's head, and that pulls it back to a two versus three. All of a sudden, it's not looking as bad. The Dokubi call comes out, the Thermite charge comes out, the Texan Dynamite gonna blow a hole in the wall. Ace is pushing his way in. He's got someone to his left. He finally manages to find him. But where are you, man, in your Shingo? What a piece. And Sengoku continue the trend. Well, 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 there we go. I told you so. <laughs> well, you know, that's, I'll, I'll pay that. That's fair. Okay, normally it's the other way around. But, uh, you know. I don't know. I just want to say it again. <laughs> Fnatic don't play Clubhouse. Like, please. For, for us Aussies. Yeah, and... I think that's something that they they need to work on. Like, I, I think that they need to come up with something. I don't think they can leave it there as a map that they ban. I think they need to actually work on it, though. Um, maybe they have been. I mean, they have been boot camping in Korea. That's something we haven't touched. In Japan. Uh, Japan, sorry. <laughs> Why did I say Korea? Um, they were boot camping in Japan for a fairly long time. Yes. Maybe they have been working on it. Like, you've got to give them, uh, you've got to give them the benefit of the doubt at this point. Yeah, well, you know... What I was going to say is, you know, we've seen a timeout been called. You're Jay Dizzle. What are you saying to your squad? If I'm Dizzle and I'm talking to my Fnatic squad, play by the numbers, all right? Play your, play your strats, execute them properly, cover you off your flanks, all right? Don't get, uh, don't get cocky. Don't get caught out. No matter how big our numerical advantage is, just focus on obtaining that round win, that next round win. Just do everything you can for that next round win. And what do you reckon the uh, the coach of uh, Sengoku is saying? Oh, I think it's Cabbages. Is he? Uh, sounds familiar. But at this point, if I was the coach of Sengoku, just keep doing what you're doing. I think Sengoku have done a fantastic job. Fnatic are. Definitely on paper anyway, considered a better team. So I think that if Sengoku are running, you know, neck and neck with Fnatic, they just have to keep doing what they're doing. They have to keep finding their openings and they have to keep getting creative with what they're doing. Well, as the timeout has ended, we are going to head on into this next round. Now, if you want to finish it in regulation, you're going to have to pick up these last two maps. But Flea and I are thinking it's going to be overtime. Over time. Yeah, it's... it's you know, at this point, you feel it's been back and forth, literally Bandits round for round. It, you know, it's... Do you think they're going basement with that mute? Uh, I believe so. That is the next bomb site available yes. for him. Yes. So. So, Fnatic attacking basement. Rizraz on this Blackbeard. We haven't seen him on Blackbeard yet. I think this is his first Blackbeard of the day. We haven't seen him on Blackbeard in a long time, time. either. And he is... You know, Rizraz and Blackbeard are just the iconic duo. You know, it's he is without a doubt the best Blackbeard in ANZ. Well, even and against Aces. The thing is about this mm. Fnatic squad, right, is Aces was their main Blackbeard. But in the history of these players, Neo Fighter, when he played for Atletico, Co. was a great Blackbeard. Rizraz, when he played for Corvidae, okay. also, yeah, also a great Blackbeard. Like, it, it, it's do you just recruit a team of five Blackbeard mates? Is that, is that how you win Worlds? <laughs> is, that, is that how you do it? Is yeah. it? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, it, it is strange for me to see Rizraz on the Blackbeard and not Aces, but... You know, this is a different fanatic. Like, they're always going to be evolving their roles and how they play, so... Well, it's actually interesting to see Aces on the Thermite. Yeah. As well. Like, Aces does not play support operators. Aces is a fragger. And it's interesting to, to see him on that support role. Oh, so he's like, Magnet, you didn't open it up tall enough. <laughs> <laughs> so he's had to crouch on through there, but... This is the roam clear here for Fnatic, as uh, I think they're going to be very thorough with this one. But... Do they have... The I don't think they have the time to be thorough, though. Like, that's what I mean. Like You have to drone it out. Set your drones up around the place so you can cut down this roam clear time. Yeah, well, I'm just interested that Fnatic are favouring the Monty so much. Yeah, it definitely seems to be something that maybe they've picked up from international scrims. Maybe it's something they've picked up while they've been in Japan here because it's not something they showed in the ANZ season at all. Yeah. So, you know, and maybe they've picked it up from this international scene while they've been over here scrimming lots of teams, so... I th uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I just think they're, they're being a lot more thorough with their roam clear because of the presence of Mute. Maybe, but 
they've wasted a minute 30 and they have control of the top floor and the bomb is in basement. They can't waste another minute 30 clearing first floor. Yeah, they've got to be a lot quicker here, don't they? And I suppose the presence of that uh, vigil that's sending out its signal, even though he's on site, it's a five-man anchor here for Sengoku. It's, it's still something they've got to be worried about. So what do you reckon they've got to do? They've got to drone out what they need to take, take control of it and watch their flanks? Yeah, well, I think it comes down to... Effective roam clear comes down to the very beginning of the match. It comes down to your prep phase. Where you place your drones at the beginning of the prep phase, you can significantly cut down on your roam clear time, checking for roamers if your drones are at key locations throughout the map. Oh, yeah. It's a lot harder to do that, though, when there's a, a, a mute, like, jamming your drones half the time, and you can see a vigil signal every now and then. You're not exactly sure where it is. So we are going to see this hatch opened up there by Aces on the Thermite. I think there might have been a bit of an impact trick attempted by Sengoku, but it was shut down by the presence of uh, Magnet on the buck. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the impact trick is, you know, something that most teams should be able to do at this level of game. And yeah, as we get into the final 30 seconds, Rizraz holding on at that angle. You know, he's actually using the SCAR, not using the DMR while we're talking about it. The smoke grenade comes out. Neofighter finds the head of our arena there. Now Aces from above trying to see what he can find. Not really finding anything though. Down to the last 15 seconds. And here comes Lusty. He's managed to push his way in. Yashingo takes a fair bit of damage. He manages to find the kill on a magnet though. Where you man comes up huge. So does Gatorina. Uh, Arizraz finds one. Gatorina trades out Lusty though. Now we are down to a one versus three. And Way you man, what a pick. Sengoku break the meta, uh, not the meta, break the, uh, the trend. break the trend we're seeing, and they manage to come up now with their advantage as we head into the last round of regular play. So this is Fnatic staring down the barrel of match point. A lot of people probably not expecting them to be here. They're probably expecting a bit of a handy victory to Fnatic, but you know this is a very massive showing here from Sengoku. Looking very nice. It is. It, it definitely is an extremely strong showing from them, but we couldn't get ahead of ourselves within the best of three. This is only one map. And as we said, Fnatic do not have a good track record in this map. Yeah, and you know, it ain't over yet either. Just because they're facing match point doesn't mean that it is uh, the final score. Of course, there still is the opportunity for overtime. And you know, if, when it gets there, either team could take it. Yeah, using a Frost to six pick onto a Bandit, I don't know if that's necessarily the greatest use of a six pick. Um, at this point, I want to see... At this point, I want to see something different, right? Like, well, that's something different, Ash to pick to Ash. I was going to say, I think there's something different we should focus on here, though, is that Fnatic have stopped trying to force out the Monty. Yes. I, I really don't reckon it was working for them, really. Like, no. it was good on their last bedroom push, but the last two rounds we've seen it fall flat on its face. Yeah. It was really good on their first, on the gym push. That being said, they're defending gym again, as Sengoku did successfully defend cash in basement, so they knew they know they're pushing gym this time. So why not bring it and just try to replicate the same strat? Uh, do we really think Sengoku's going to have an answer for it this time? Yeah, well, all Fnatic uh, really have to do, I feel, is take control of cash room and uh, you know once they've done that it is rather simple to push on into the site setting up crossfires and cross angles from the uh, windows at the front and pushing from construction attackers are heading out yeah absolutely it is and I feel like Fnatic they are gonna have to they're gonna have to come up with something they are probably going to push in through cash um, I, I don't think I don't see them really doing anything else. They could come in through the west balcony, but I don't I don't I just don't see them doing it as it leaves too much to be unknown and you know, Fnatic loves to know things. So uh, I think they're really going to be roam clearing from this east side. Yeah, well, Lusty heading on into the garage or at least opening the door and uh, Gatorada he is nice and close to it. The phone call, the scans on the drone will be coming on out. And he's going to actually win that first gunfight. He's going to oh. win the second. See you later, Magnet. He's put his team in the man of varnish. Five to three. Fnatic, <laughs> what are you doing? Just taking the one angled wow. fight like that. Yeah, they had someone on the other side of the... Um, garage wall as well, yet they did not connect with it. They were putting shots randomly through it blindly, but no one chose to shoot, uh, no one chose to shot from that angle while they had the drone scan on him. He, like, Gatorada should not have won that in any way, but he comes up massive and he gets out alive. Rizraz now going to be doing the Maverick trick across the bottom here again. He, 
going to be a bit more careful of C4 this time. You can see yeah, he's already repelled to the top. Oh, and they have actually banded it down. They haven't actually shot the batteries at all, so that's going to have to be Rizraz's yeah. job. There we go. It's going to be safe for the Thermite to go down now, but, you know, this is going to be very one-dimensional. They're going to know exactly where Fnatic is pushing from, and, you know, I think uh, this might be all over Red Rover right here, unless Fnatic have got something up their sleeves. Well, let's don't discount them just yet. You know, all really strong fraggers. They can all come up here. They can all come up huge. Gatorada is still extremely low. So, uh, they could easily put this into a four versus five if he gets caught out. A uh, three versus four, sorry, if he gets caught out. Yeah, well, they've got 50 seconds to do something here, Fnatic. Gonna have to move quickly, but they are taking their time so far. Yeah, certainly not going to be a slave to that clock, not going to be moving forward too much, but if they wait much longer, it's going to hurt them a lot. And they have to come up with that win. They have to come up with the win here. They can't not come up with the win. Yeah, and we're going to see Yoshi find the shots on to Rizraz. This is looking dire and more dire by the second. Neo Fighter is going to be peaked by Arena, but he's going to win that fight. It's all up to Ace as he's stuck in the smoke, and this... C4 from Suzu are going to put Sengoku on the board for the first map. Yeah, 6-4. What a showing by Sengoku. What a statement by them as well. They were certainly not going home getting 12-0 this time. No, they are not. Yeah, 6-4. Sengoku, so immediately they've started off better than what they did <laughs> at the Season 7 Finals. Got to be a bit of a nerve settler for them. Oh, absolutely it is. They're going to have to be really, really happy with that. And you can see the smile on their faces as they won that. You know, up in the air, there was a lot of 